one day earlier. Hey team, welcome back to the channel. After a few fantastic days in Wellington over the Christmas period, the time had come to make our way back north to Auckland in time for New Year's. So we jumped onto State Highway 1 and drove north out of Wellington and then picked up State Highway 59 for some truly special views of the west coast of the North Island. I am feeling very happy right now. Look at this place. Beautiful. After a couple more hours of stunning driving, we made it to our destination for the night, the small town of Wanganui. We are back on the beach at Wanganui. As you can see, it is a volcanic beach. Um, it's windy, but one advantage it turns out of volcanic sand is it's a bit coarser, which means it's heavier, and even though it's quite blowy, it's not being whipped around like gold sand would be in this kind of wind. So actually it's quite nice, and even though it's a bit blowy, it's quite pleasant. We have spent about three and a half hours driving today because we got caught in traffic for about an hour. Um, and now we have brought some wine and popcorn to the beach, and we're going to chill. See you later. We are on Route 45, which is the surf highway, um, taking us around the west coast of the North Island of New Zealand. And all of it is framed by that, Mount Taranaki. It is imposing. <laughs> Hello from Nagamotu Beach in New Plymouth. New Plymouth is a fairly big place. It's about four kilometers down the coast that way towards the town centre. So we are going to head there and see if we can find a little bit of tourist information about Mount Taranaki and the best ways to go and see it hopefully tomorrow. We are in New Plymouth, which I had rather been hoping would be like a charming seaside-y town type. It's not. It's, um, it's a bit industrial. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not the most charming of places I've ever been to. It's all right, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's all I've got to say about that. We found ourselves a great free camping spot just out of town before heading out for the evening. We are at a major international festival, as you can see. I'm sure there's more people somewhere else. This is the New Plymouth Festival of Lights. And who are we here to see, darling? Fleet Mac Wood. Fleet Mac Wood. I originally read that as Fleetwood Mac and got terribly excited. Um, but it turns out they are like a DJ tribute kind of thing. I don't really know, but it's free and why not? Um, but in the meantime, we are going to have a little walk around this park, Kukarai Park, I believe it's pronounced, and they have transformed the whole place into a light show. Um, and in about 20 minutes when the sun goes down, all of this is going to get lit up. That'd probably be quite cool. We will see you for a bit of Fleet Mac wood, or whoever they are. After a few minutes of exploring, we found the crowds. Audience is starting to wake up. It's a great little atmosphere this, it's really cool. Whilst the festival warms up, we thought we'd go and walk around the lights. It's really beautiful what they've done around here. The Festival of Lights is an annual event held every year from mid-December to late January in Pukakura Park in New Plymouth. Free entertainment is put on every day, all set to the backdrop of lighting installations throughout the park. The festival had a fantastic atmosphere and we loved walking around and seeing the light installations come to life as the sun set. And then it was time for some Fleet Mac Wood classics. Oh 
It's been a very unexpected, really brilliant evening. This is such a wonderful, lovely event. Well done you Plymouth, I'm impressed. Say good morning to Mount Taranaki. That is a two and a half thousand meter high volcano last erupted 1755. Hopefully it'll hold on for a day or two more because I am going to run a 19 kilometer crossing route around its base. Um, and I'm gonna meet Lauren at the other end so that we can get a really good look at it. I am walking to the beginning of the 19 kilometer crossing. And in the background is that. Little reminder, very early on, not to take the mountain lightly. It's dangerous up there. To commemorate the heroism of Arthur Hamilton Ambury, who gave his life attempting to rescue William E. Corale on the 3rd of June, 1918. Good on him. Let's go and enjoy that view. I'm through. 308 meters elevation gain. I'm up at about 1300 meters. You can see the track that I've been following all the way up and round. Not really running yet. It's all uphill, it's all steep and craggy. And I start to hit flatter or downer stuff, then I've got a chance. But this is tough but beautiful. I'm not at the highest peak yet. Up over that way next. The top of the mountain is shrouded in smoke on this side at the moment. Smoke, cloud, don't panic mum. I'll see you in a bit. We are at 1,314 meters. This is the view. I think it's about as high as we're gonna get, maybe a tiny bit higher over there, but it's brilliant. It's over there. Yeah, <laughs> two and a half kilometers to get here from the uh, the base station. It's taken me about 34, 35 minutes, uh, but I've gained, I've gained 375 meters, so it's straight uphill. Hopefully those guys are not on their way to rescue anybody, but I'm pretty sure that's a rescue chopper. Look at this. That's at least another 500 meters up to the top there. There's been a lot of rock falls and the valley comes down there. This is pretty gnarly going. Um, you wouldn't want to do this when it's been raining. It would be super slippy and quite dangerous. But worth it for those views. Look at that. According to a warning sign I just passed, there's a risk of falling rocks and debris in this area. Don't know what they're talking about. Look at that. This is going to be a little bit gnarly, and I've got to get myself up to there. Should be alright. I'd be lying to you if I said that I've done much running so far. In fact, this is about the most runnable thing I've come across. It's all been pretty fast going on uh, on the hiking there. Uh, 1 hour 23 minutes to 5.5 kilometres. Uh, I've gained about 450 metres of elevation, something like that. See you in a bit. So that is the surf highway that we drove all the way around yesterday up to New Plymouth over there. Look at this. I can see what looks like the trail path down there. And this, I can finally run on without fear of death. This is one of the most beautiful places that I have ever had the joy of going for a run, the Ahukawaka Swamp. It was formed when there was a rock slide that blocked a river coming down the volcano, which meant the river had to find another way around. And in the process, it soaked this area through and created this incredible, unique swamp. Um, it's very delicate, so it should have a boardwalk the whole way. Um, it includes half of all of the plant species that are found here within this 100 hectares of space. The swamp was formed three and a half thousand years ago, look at this.
Bugger me, that just suddenly got very steep. How about that for a view? Top of Mount Taranaki still hidden. Starting to suffer now a little bit, it must be said. I've climbed 700 metres. There's still a couple of hundred to go. It's 20 to 2, very hot. I've done uh, nearly 11 kilometres in 2 hours 25 minutes. And it is tough up here. And the climbing keeps going. But I'll tell you what, it is well worth it for a view like that. It's a shame I can't see the peak. I know what it looks like, it would have been something to see it there. But this easily ranks as one of the three best runs of my life. It's incredible, even if I am a bit out of shape and had a couple too many beers last night and have a bit of a sore head and I'm probably gonna be a little bit pink by the end of this. This is, this is epic. This is what we come to New Zealand for. See you in a bit. I'm over the peak. 764 meters of climbing I've done in total now. That's what I've just come up and over. That view is magic. It's taken all day, but the summit's finally peaked out. Look at that. Wow. Oh. The next hut is just a five minute walk down that way. But I think I might tell Lauren just to come up here because she won't get views like this otherwise. That's staggering. How beautiful. Uh, I've climbed 813 metres to get to this point. It's just gone two o'clock. I've done 12.6 kilometres in two hours, 46 minutes. Oh, what a route. That is epic. And over here, you can see New Plymouth. There's a little human walking in the distance over there. And she's wearing a blue backpack that I recognise. If this was an episode of Pokemon, I would say that a wild wife is about to appear. Let's see if I can catch her with a little smile. Maybe some chocolate. Well, the only chocolate I've got is chocolate raisins, and she hates chocolate raisins, so that might not be the technique. Ooh. Nearly fell for about the fifth time. Hello! Look at you! I'm going to wait for the smile. She's done it. Taking her an hour and a half. So then says it should be about two and a half hours and she's made it to a very well earned view. I'm cooked. Lauren brought me popcorn. It's taken three hours, 800 meters of climbing to get to this point. But as a spot for a picnic goes, it's about the best we've ever had. Mm. We have had our lunch and we are on our way back down. This is the way that Lauren came up. Oh, it's much easier going down. <laughs> we are tramping our way back down. Uh, we've got another two and a half K I reckon. And according to Lauren who walked this way up, it's all like this. There's not much view, but it is at least shaded, which I'm quite grateful for because I'm cooked. Talk to me, Mrs. Dom. A little bit of assistance if you're planning on doing this trip. Lauren dropped me off at the North Egmont Visitors Centre and drove around to the car park at the end of the Pukai Crossing route on Mangrove Road. Pukai Crossing is the route that I took. She walked from the car park to the Puakai hut, which is the third of the three huts that you'll find along the crossing route. And that is where we met. A word of advice from me. The route I hiked going from the car park was pretty boring. It was boardwalk stairs the whole way, which is great for those who enjoy the Stairmaster, but it was completely sheltered by forest and there aren't any opportunities to sit down, rest or take in the views. It took me at least an hour and a half before I came across a viewpoint, so unless you are set on going for a hike, 
I recommend that you park at the visitor center and enjoy the views from there. Your quads will thank you. It's taken until gold now. But there is finally a clear view to the summit of Taranaki. You can see there's still snow up there. We met a couple who got up there earlier. They said they very strongly considered turning back several times. I think it's a difficult technical hike to get to the top. Well done on them. We will not be going up there, but my goodness is it beautiful. We've just had some dinner and now we're going to have a well-earned rest. So from the Doms. Good night. That is the silhouette of Mount Taranaki on a perfectly clear night with the last little bit of the sunset behind it and the moon lighting it from this side. That's incredible. After one of the best days that we'd had in New Zealand so far, we took our very tired legs to bed. And so ends our trip to Mount Taranaki. Thank you so much for having us. It was exhausting and <laughs> exactly. really, really cool. Look at that. It's just magic. Yeah. Anyway, onwards. We are having a little pit stop. We've driven about an hour from Taranaki north. Uh, Lauren kind of had heard of this place and then just saw a sign for it on the side of the road. The Three Sisters, which we're assuming are some sort of rocks that we'll be able to see from the ocean. But the sand is as black as anything. We're very much back to the volcanic sand. Yeah. <laughs> the, the cliff face is brilliant. Stuff full of tropical plants. Look at that. I've not seen that before. What a cool spot. I think these are the three sisters and they're spectacular because as I'm sure you can see, our favorite Mount Taranaki is sitting in the background. The water is so warm it's so nice and when the tide is out Lauren if you go stand over there or when the, sorry when the water is out people reflect the volcanic sand is like a mirror it's amazing look at that and some dance moves for you for free you're welcome TikTok look at this a completely unplanned pit stop and I don't know, maybe the nicest beach we've seen? Maybe the nicest beach we've seen. It's brilliant, what a spot. There's also a freedom camping area here. So if we had any water left, I suspect we'd probably park up here. But we're out of water and in desperate need of doing some washing. But this is amazing. So gorgeous. Oh man, I wish we'd stayed here. I wish we'd known about this. Top three beaches we've seen so far all trip, Australia and New Zealand included. Yeah. Jungle background, reflection of Mount Taranaki in the water, Three Sisters, warm ocean. Yeah, yeah, you can see the steam of the ocean water evaporating on the sand. This is fantastic. What a place. Why is this not busier? We drove on a couple of hours to a small place called Waitomo, our stop for the night. We are having a much needed and extremely well earned, very lazy afternoon. It's six o'clock. We have barely moved for two hours. We got here about, about three-ish. And it's a beautiful day again. There is not a cloud in the sky. And we are going to, you. yeah, uh, there it is. And we are going to have a beer and a cider and eventually some dinner. And if we're feeling adventurous, we might go out for a walk or we might veg. If this is the last thing that we say to you today, good evening. 
How's that for a little sunset? So beautiful. Next time on the Doms Down Under, we're taking you down the spine of the North Island of New Zealand. We check out the amazing gardens in Hamilton. I finally keep a promise in Hobbiton. The rivers rage and the ground smokes at Lake Topol. And we go for a little walk across Mount Doom. There's been a strong smell of sulphur for the last few uh, last few minutes and we can tell where it's come from. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope you've enjoyed this one. And as always, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. We're nearly at 400 subscribers.